Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the Acerio Holdings ASRT and Spectrum Pharmaceuticals SPPI summary for the 12th of June 2023, in which we're looking at the combined companies because they will be merging in quarter three 2023. So I generally follow small cap pharma, I follow games, I do kind of what I want with my channel. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps me out, helps me out a lot, and thank you. A disclaimer is I have owned Spectrum in the past and I might invest in this in the future. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed up by your own due diligence. And any information given is valid for today, the 12th of June, 2023, and the slideshow will not be updated uh, as we get new news, new information, new slideshow. Cool. Uh, the investment thesis. So Acerdio is trying to include the Spectrum drug into the mix to replace its drug, Indosin, in case it becomes generic. Innocent was 73% of total sales in quarter one, 2023, which is about 30 million. Uh, Spectrum drug sales were 15.6 in quarter one, 2023. Uh, the merger is set to happen in quarter three, 2023. And of course, the generic threat is really weighing down the stock. Uh, the companies together, so Spectrum had 56 million in cash and carried a $5 million net loss in quarter one. Acerdio had 69 million in cash and carried a $4 million net loss in quarter one. The Acerio net loss was due to a $10, $10 million from other expenses. They got rid of some debt. They took care of some stuff. So it really was closer to a $4 million uh, net gain. But just because of everything else, it becomes a net loss. Uh, by the end of the fourth quarter, unless something significant happens, the company should have a combined total of $110 to $130 million in cash. Uh, let's see, Acerio does have about $38 million in total expenses. In quarter one, we're not sure how much Spectrum is going to add to that. But the big thing is you have approximately about $120 million in cash. The CEO has stated they are planning to acquire other drugs uh, to, of course, uh, help with the generic threat. And, of course, they have $40 million in debt due, but that is in 2027. So the chance of the generic. So in the 10K, the company stated there are no patents covering Indosin products, which accounted for 64% of revenue in 2022, which means a generic drug company could introduce a generic for these drugs at any time. In addition, we are aware of other drug companies that have had interactions with regulatory agencies, including the FDA, related to the drug, which could indicate the development of one or more uh, innocent products or other formulations. So generics are slightly different than when you're going for regular approval. The companies do not have to state they're filing for a generic until it's already filed and approved. So I could make this the 12th. And on the 13th, they could say, hey, we have a generic. So it does kind of suck a little bit. So they know that there is a process moving. They just have absolutely no visibility to what that process is. So it is definitely a business in flux. So most of the products are going generic or have gone generic. So, and you can see the list up there. Uh, most of them add some, still some revenue in quarter one, 2023, but they're all generic. <clears throat> and Indusin could go generic at any point, and its sales were $30 million in quarter one, 2023. It is really the driver of the company. So the company did pick up a drug from uh, Spectrum and from Equestia uh, to help begin their transitions. So uh, Spectrum's drug, again, uh, for, are forecasted for 2024 between $90 million and $170 million. And the uh, Equestia drug sales forecast is 2024, is 10 to 15. There is, again, a possible generic chance for it in 2024, but they're trying to get it pushed back to 2039. That would be pretty big for that, but you can kind of see between these two drugs or even uh, Spectrum Doug itself, you could still beat your company guidance for this year, which is uh, 2023 sales guidance is 150 to 160 million. So you can see if they can make it work, it's going to be good. The summary, so normally break-even companies are worth about a billion plus. However, with the overhang of the main product going generic, the company's stock cap is around $345 million. That's the 8th of June. Uh, if they can complete the successful turnaround and have the newer drug match the current drugs in terms of sales, the company has a great chance to improve and gain its market cap. If the generic does take longer to come out and takes time to affect sales, you know, something that we say happens in mid-2024, the company should have enough um, enough money and ability to complete this turnaround time. However, this is about as much of a gambling stock as you can look at. Because <laughs> you just don't know when the generics can occur. Obviously, if they can get through 2024 with no 
effect, they will have a huge ton of cash, which will allow them to easily uh, take out the Indocent issue. So, but that's just the question. You just don't know. That's why the company price has been down. We're going to just have to see how it turns out. And hopefully this was enough information that you can make an informed decision about it. Thank you very much for watching and listening and have a wonderful day.